we begin tonight, mm. it is with Brexit. And despite assuring her party for the last two years mm. that she won't ask for an extension, Today, the UK Prime Minister, Theresa May, did just that and requested an EU pause to the Brexit countdown clock for three months until June 30th. But the EU Commission hit straight back. It called Theresa May's extension plan, quote, legally and politically difficult. And it said it favoured either a short extension until May 23rd, as Peter was suggesting before the EU elections, or a significantly longer one. And that sets the scene for a clash between the EU and Mrs May at tomorrow's summit in Brussels. Here's what Theresa May, the UK Prime Minister, had to say at Prime Minister's Question Time in Westminster earlier today. I have therefore this morning written to President Tusk, the President of the European Council, informing him, informing him that the UK seeks an extension to the Article 50 period until the 30th of June. Copies of the letter are being placed in the libraries of the House. The government, intends, the government intends to bring forward proposals for a third meaningful vote. If that vote is passed, the extension will give the House time to consider the Withdrawal Agreement Bill. If not, the House will have to decide how to proceed. But as Prime Minister, as Prime Minister, I am, I am not prepared to delay Brexit any further than the 30th of June. Well, joining us now uh, from London is our correspondent, Tug Enright, uh, who is in Westminster for us. Uh, Tug, when you look at this uh, and what the Prime Minister talked about there during that short extension period, she reiterated re not once but twice uh, that she wasn't prepared as Prime Minister to extend it beyond the end of June, suggesting that she might not be the Prime Minister to make that decision, that this could be a resignation issue for her. Yeah, that question very much uh, hanging over that statement today. And Downing Street, when asked by political correspondents to comment on that, not wanting to be drawn on it. The reality for Theresa May, though, when it comes to her party support base, is that her party has long since given up with speaking with uh, one voice on the fundamental issue of Brexit. So as to the decision today to take the longer extension off the table, the response to that is effectively governed by whether you are a uh, no-dealer, uh, somebody who wants to leave with a deal, or if you do hold out some hope still of uh, a Remain outcome to all of this. And it was those pro-Brexit, even hard Brexit voices within her cabinet which forced her into this position today. Those are the people who think that no deal would be just fine, perhaps in some cases even preferable. But it was certainly dismayed many others who, for whom they recognise getting a deal will take a long time. And certainly too, dismayed the moderates who have seen yet another example of hard Brexiteers bullying Theresa May into a corner. You know, if you'd asked me my uh, forecast this morning as to why Theresa May was taking a long extension off the table, it was so that that she could be seen as being forced into a longer extension because that's what we thought the EU wanted. But then John claude Juncker knocked all that out of the water by saying actually a shorter extension might actually be uh, his preference. Perhaps that's only a bargaining position too. And of course it's not a decision for him, it's a decision for the, uh, the Council of Leaders. In many regards, they are piling pressure on uh, Theresa May, talking about these two choices she has. But, of course, she has got one final strategy, which is to try and get her deal still through the UK Parliament. Uh, she seems to be pushing yet still for a third vote. Can that still happen, given what's happened uh, this week at Westminster? Certainly, I think you're referring to what the House Speaker John Burko said earlier this week, saying that uh, no two votes of that are the same vote can happen within any one parliamentary period. You know, I think it is still logistically possible, even if it's not politically possible. If she can muster a majority around her withdrawal agreement, there are ways and means of overcoming that uh, obstacle put in the place by John Burko. And certainly that's what her timetable is based on, getting that deal over the line next week and hoping that this escalated process of a no-deal Brexit might ratchet up the pressure on those people who are still holding out. But I think working against her is that some within her own party really smell blood and they sense an, op an, an opportunity to knock her out of the, the, the running, to take control over this process. There is a rump of around 20 Conservative MPs who have said no, under no circumstances, will
will they support this withdrawal agreement, whatever happens to the backstop? And when you have a parliamentary majority as small as Theresa May's is, well, then those 20 MPs could very easily stand in the way. Interesting stuff. Targan Wright uh, joining us from Westminster, a correspondent to that. Thank you very much indeed. You know, Theresa May is under an awful lot of pressure. I think we can all agree on that. She is some way stuck between a rock and a hard place, between her own party and Brussels. Is Brussels making her life more difficult, though, by suggesting that she cannot have this extension, which seems terribly reasonable, until the end of June? Well, I think it's been very clear from the EU side that there would be legal uncertainty if it would go beyond May 23rd. This is not a surprise, and in many ways it's not even an answer to Theresa May. The question is, why did she not listen to that advice from the European Union? And I don't think that the EU or anyone is interested on our side to apply pressure on Theresa May. Frankly, we see enough of it coming from London. Our interest is, and the EU's interest should be, to preserve the certainty of the EU27 in this very chaotic process. But it's also, it's also not to see the UK crash out. Because that no, would we be... don't want that. We, uh, Personally, I don't even want Brexit. But now that this is happening, we also have to make sure that this extension that has now been demanded is met with something different on the table than what we've seen before. Because the question that is still unanswered is an extension for what? Exactly. And I don't see yeah, anything so closer to a parliamentary well. majority. I don't see anything alternative on the table but the withdrawal agreement, which has been voted down twice. So we need to understand what the well, extension would the, lead to, and we cannot just the, the, extend the, indefinitely. Well, there were moves, and we did see over the weekend and over the last week or so, MPs finally switching to, reach, to Theresa May's uh, deal. When it comes down to this, what was call, talked about as being kind of legally and politically difficult situation for the British... Uh, sorry, for the Europeans when it comes to this, we all know that Brussels can come up. They can get round these rules. They can find legal back... Uh, back no, routes I mean, to these things. They've done no, it before. Why can they not do it again? No, again, this is a misreading of uh, what Brussels is doing. I mean, we will not shift the date of the European election. If the United Kingdom is a member state on the date of the election, it is legally bound to organise right. the elections, period. There's right. no way around it. But as far as I understand it, when Sweden joined, Austria joins? They, yeah, they but this is joining the EU. <laughs> Here, the UK yeah. has joined, That's the is a member. And yeah. until the United Kingdom is legally out of the European Union, it is a member. And there's no way around this. And when you speak about making their lives easier, what makes it difficult is not our inflexibility. What makes it difficult is a legally binding treaty that the United Kingdom freely subscribed to called the Good Friday Agreement. That is a constraint. If you did not have that constraint, the UK could, be, could achieve a clean cut with uh, the European Union. It cannot because of the Good Friday Agreement. So we did not create that Good Friday Agreement. The UK created it together with the Republic of Ireland. Peter, what, what are, you in, are you in favour of a long extension? But, yeah, but I don't know. If, 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 if it avoids, if it avoids yeah. the UK crashing out, and it's mm. probably what Parliament in the UK wants, would you be in favour of a long extension? If, if I understand the communication right, there was, there was uh, EU say, OK, we, we, uh, we will not say to postpone something, but we have to, you have to say, Theresa May, you have to say why. Is there a change if you postpone this? And then there was, I would say, two versions on the table, postponed, Till before the European election, or yeah. for a long Postpone period. Of time. For a I long haven't period. heard the prime minister and, and say no. that she wants and, elections, and I don't no. that she wants to participate yeah. in the European elections. Yeah. Can you imagine but, what the the house would look like if she said we want to extend beyond May 23rd, but, and therefore but, we're going to participate but, in the European Parliament's but, but, elections? But, but, Nigel but, Farage but, probably be happy so he can participate. Well, not the Greens says But right. I think that a lot but, of but, people. But the end of June is. is, 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 is I don't think she would get no, support for participating in the European elections. Has she put it on the table? No. So the real <laughs> questions continue to be pushed forward, pushed forward, pushed right. forward. And I that mean, is the right. problem. But what, strategy... I don't, what I don't understand is, is this because, um, and I'm not entirely sure why Europe is in favour of a long extension, when what it could mean is a lot more Niger Farage's in the European Parliament, potentially a different Brexiteer leader who might be willing to veto legislation and to cause real angst here in Brussels, and a British commissioner who, but again, who might be quite difficult. But who is in favour of a long extension? I don't well, hear voices for that. Well, Donald Tusk said he was yes. last week. Well, but again, only if there thing... is something on the table, and there exactly. isn't. But... Exactly. One, one thing at, uh, at a time. First, Theresa May's strategy has been very clear now. It was running down the clock. Yeah. If she comes back saying, give me more time to run down the clock longer, <laughs> Basically. sorry. 
Exactly. Sorry, no, because all the elements of the decision are on the table and have been on the table for the last 18 mm. months, since the political, the joint declaration at the end of 2017. So everything is known. What is lacking is the mm. political courage or the political will to strike the deal. And if the British Parliament is unable or unwilling to take up its own responsibilities, then the next step should what? be back to the people. So, and if you yeah, need yeah. more time to go back to the people, this is something I understand. Then, of course, we will grant you the time that is necessary to go back to the people. And if that means an additional six months, fine. But then, of course, you participate but, in the European right, election right. So, because so, the conclusion yep. but, of a second the, referendum yeah, yeah. might be that the UK stays in the European Union. So, exactly. so are we looking at, Peter, then, essentially yeah. the EU saying, OK, we might give you an extension, but it's got a whole list of conditions attached to it? No. Not a whole list. No. In, the, in the end, we wait. We wait for for a proposal from Great Britain with a majority in the Parliament. Exactly. It's very easy. We need but a plan. We we yes. all, all <laughs> yeah, we need an agenda with, with a majority. Of course. And now we know nothing. And in the end, you you have to think about it. But does it mean uh, to postpone t till end of June? If there is end of there come end of June and there is no solution, what what what's happened? They are well, part of the election or not? Well, that, that, that is, uh, that is, we have to take care. Uh, also, we have to do European Union, the 27 member states, a European election, and we have to make it sure, very sure, or from the legal base. Well, you, you guys and are all politicians, cannot... and you all know that things are about compromise. And Theresa May doesn't clearly want to split her party. Though it is interesting tonight that Downing Street uh, have announced that Theresa May is going to meet with the opposition leaders. Uh, uh, potentially for further talks ahead wow. of the council tomorrow. At long last. <laughs> At long last, there you go. And um, Well, it's not just the views of these MEPs <laughs> here uh, right. that reflect on this Brexit process. We managed to catch up with some others earlier on today about whether or not uh, there should be an extension. And here's what they had to say. My mother is British, so it's a heartache for me. An extension, yes, they have to decide. They have to get their act together because we have decided they haven't. Well, there must be an extension somehow, I'm afraid. Um, but I'm not so sure that granting an extension will make British politics solve the issue. I don't know, because they said Morris 29, and I think they are going to leave Morris 29. I hope so. Um, it depends on, on the conditionality. So if there is a hint that um, there's a possibility to, to get overcome the, the deadlock in the parliament, then yes. But if it just is to have more time, then it doesn't make any sense. I have no idea, but it's absolutely clear that we are not able to solve it on 29th of March. I mean, it's basically in a week, which is not doable. They have found so many ways to say no. They should find a way to say, you know, OK. There you go. It's extraordinary uh, that everyone seems quite unanimous on this. But also, Philippe, I get a real sense that people here are really frustrated now with London. Yeah, but then again, this is life. I mean, life is also full of frustrations. <laughs> we have to make do with that. Uh, that's part of life, so keep calm and carry on. Well, we're going to keep calm and carry on, but we're definitely going to carry on because Brexit as an issue, potentially an extraordinary EU Council summit again next week uh, to look out for, on the addition to the one that starts uh, tomorrow. It's going to be a fascinating week. Well, 